Okay, so we're here to set up our Raspberry Pi computer to run in a headless manner. Now, when we when you hear people talking about a computer running headless, what they're really saying is uh, it's running without a screen, a keyboard, and a mouse. So no sort of human input devices connected directly to it. Now, if we set up a computer to run like that, how then will we manage the computer and install software and get everything happening? Well, what we can do is remotely access the computer um, with the use of another computer. All right, I just wanted to jump in here and explain something to those that might be uh, watching and feeling a little bit confused and you're asking yourself, um, dude, what are you doing? You're using one computer to control another computer. What is the point of that? Um, so you're, if, if you're in that camp, the point is this. There are many computers in the world and they are running in what, be, what would be considered uh, server mode. So it's sitting there uh, receiving and spitting out data or serving data 24-7. Um, yeah, it could be a website server, email server, uh, file server, and could be a server such as, you know, Facebook would be a server, um, WhatsApp, again, server, and a computer sitting there that's churning away, and a human does not need to be there, so there's no point to have a mouse keyboard and and an expensive screen permanently connected to that running 24-7. Waste of hardware, waste of money, uh, waste of electricity, and so on. Uh, if somebody needs to do any maintenance on that computer while it's running, um, they'll do that through the means of um, remote access. So we need to enable that feature, and again, how do we actually do that? And we don't have a screen and a keyboard and this and that. Well, um, if you remember on the previous video, we set up the operating system. And if I were to plug this in here, turn it on, it will actually power up, but we won't be able to do anything. No mouse, no screen, all of that. And we also won't be able to uh, gain remote access um, because by default all such features are disabled uh, for security reasons. We can't allow this to be plugged into a Raspberry Pi, turned on and at that exact moment open to the world, your neighbours or whoever, to gain access and do what they want with the computer. So by default that's all disabled and we have to enable that and we do that by dropping a simple text file onto here in a particular place and by doing that that will automatically enable um, remote access via a, um, a Linux we would call that a shell terminal um, guys people coming from uh, Windows might call that a, you know be something akin to a command prompt just quickly uh, I will be setting up remote desktop access if you're interested in that so yeah you'll just have to stick around we're not quite there yet uh, so let's drop the file on here and enable remote access um, we'll put that back into my reader and that should get mounted to our file manager with a bit of luck uh, here it is, these two partitions here. Um, so I'm just going to create a good old text file and I'm going to call that SSH. It's currently on my desktop and I'm going to paste that into the boot. Uh, The boot partition. So that's that done. The text file was completely empty 
and there was no extension on that file name so you can you cannot use ssh.txt it just needs to be called ssh when we power up the raspberry pi it will see that file and do what it needs to do next up uh, is to get the pi to connect to my internet connection in the home here um, and we're going to need to get the ip address Right, you've got two options here to get this uh, Pi on the network and internet and, and everything. So one uh, is to connect a network cable between your Raspberry Pi and uh, your router. Um, that's real easy. Get a cable, plug it in, and you're done. Or the next step is uh, to connect via a Wi-Fi signal. So that that scene is coming up next. So we actually need to do yet another change to the um, SD card. Um, so let's bring up a browser and let's go search for the appropriate information that we need. So we need a headless Wi-Fi uh, Raspberry Pi, headless Wi-Fi, Raspberry Pi, and we should have some information here on the official uh, website, Raspberry Pi website, so let's just shove this off to the left here, and um, all the information you need is here, so what it's telling us is to create a file, so let's create a file, text file, and it needs to be called this name here. Um, I'm just going to copy that and paste that here. So that's our text file. And it's telling us to put this in the text file. So let's open up our editor. Let's get a copy of this. Paste that into our text file. Um, it's going to remove that empty line above that. And there's a couple of comments in here um, telling us we need a two letter country code. So you punch in your two letter country code in there. Um, I'm in New Zealand so that's going to be NZ I hope and the SSID that's the name of the Wi-Fi signal put that inside the quotes um, for me that's going to be that and then password I'll probably blocks this out so it can't be read once I publish this uh, on YouTube. So my password is all right so we've got that. Let's save that. So that's now saved and we put that I read this earlier we put this um, into the same folder where we put that SSH file. So I'm just going to close that now. Take a copy of it. I might use that later. Okay, so there it is there. Um, I just need to eject that from our system here. We should not just pull the SD card out of there without first ejecting it. Okay, so that's done. I can now pull that out. Sweet. Now we're up to the exciting bit. And here's our, I'm not sure how I'm going to film this, but here's our SD card here. Um, let me just check I've got power on this cable here. I have. Alright, Raspberry Pi is off. 
We take the SD card, we're going to plug this into the back here. I pray you guys can see this. So the SD card is in now. Um, what we're going to do now is hit the power button. You should see the power light come on. Three, two, one. Uh, let's try and zoom in there. Alright. Looks like it's doing something. The little green LED is flickering, telling us it's doing something. But, um, yeah, there's no screen and whatnot on there, of course. Or keyboard, or mouse. Okay, so we'll just tie hoar here for a bit. That just means wait. Um, give the computer time to boot up. Remember, this is the very first time the operating system has boot. Um, in such a circumstance, uh, it would often take a little longer than usual since it has to um, configure itself. And remember, it's going to attempt to connect to our Wi-Fi uh, internet connection in the home so we sort of need to give it time for that to happen as well uh, I think the Raspberry Pi website recommends I don't know 5-10 minutes I can't remember um, so we'll just wait wait for it to do its thing I'm thinking if we just sort of wait until this little green light here sort of stops um, blinking and crazy and at that time we'll, we might try and find the Pi on our network. Now while it's going um, there are tools we can use on a computer to search for the IP address of that Raspberry Pi and frankly the other day I, I tried nmap pinging, um, ifconfig, ipconfig, all these sort of techniques and yes they do work but they just don't work reliably reliably and um, uh, it's a lot of mucking around and I thought well there's got to be a better way than that when I say something it basically needs to happen um, so what I found actually was the best solution was to just go and download an app for the old trusty phone you know so that's what I did I went to, I'm using Android here, um, I went to the Google Play Store and I had done a quick search and the one that came straight up to the top of that search was called Network IP Scanner and it looks something like this. I think it's doing a scan right now so I think that's, I think for me, often I might go out on site to someone else's uh, network in an office block or something like that and if I can walk in there, whip something out of my pocket and find IP addresses of pretty much everything in the vicinity, I think I'd just go with this. So it did work rel more reliably than um, using tools on a computer already on the network so that's what I would recommend um, little green lights stop flickering so let's do a quick search on my phone here and see what we, we can find I'm running the free version of this app and if it works out it's going to be pretty darn good then I'll happily pay for the version to remove all the advertising and whatnot. Um, it's searching now. All right, guys, um, I've found it. Let me just put up a screenshot of what I see on my phone down here, and um, you'll see what we're looking at in terms of identifying the Raspberry Pi. All right. that out of the way let's start um, poking into our Raspberry Pi from this computer remember it's over there okay, so we need to bring up our... all 
All right, let's try and gain access to the Raspberry Pi for the very first time. And we're going to use an app called uh, Putty. Now, I do know that this um, exists for uh, Windows, um, Linux, and probably Mac. And the IP address reported on our phone app was that. And let's click open and with a bit of luck we'll have a result. Now I've got two computer screens here and you know, I'm just sorry I'll just have to drag these off from the other screen. So at that exact moment these two windows popped up and we've got a security alert and whatnot. And so what we've got to do is click accept. And this is all a good sign by the way. It means uh, the Raspberry Pi is uh, responding. We click accept. Now we need to log in. The uh, login for the Raspberry Pi is Pi. Press enter. And the default password is, you can Google, Google this. Uh, the Raspberry Pi does have a um, default password. I was a bit slow finding the uh, default password that um, Raspberry Pi decided it will uh, close the connection because I took too long. So that's that's fine. Let's fire it up again. Putty. Here we go. IP address 192.168.1.90. Ah. Uh, Login as Pi, that's the default username. And the password, the default password is Raspberry, all lowercase, click enter. And there you have it. We now have a connection into the Raspberry Pi. Um, so that's actually Two things tested. It actually connected to the Wi-Fi connection and it enabled remote access via uh, SSH. So we've got our terminal there. So that's perfect. Uh, one of the very first things you, you'll want to do is uh, reset the default password of your Pi. And to do that we just punch in this command here. P A S S W D. So that's the command. Hit enter. Now we need to enter in the current password, and that's the default one, which is Raspberry. And then now we create our new password. Um, side note here uh, if you had powered up your Raspberry Pi in the traditional manner with a mouse keyboard and whatnot, then um, it would have taken you through an installation wizard of the operating system and at that point you can um, you're asked to choose a password and everything and uh, it just doesn't seem to complain so much um, regarding uh, simple passwords so I only just discovered that the other day so uh, let me just um, show you I'm just going to do a simple password like um, um, a, B, enter, and then A, B again, enter. So you see that there, um, you must choose a longer password. That's fine. So my password is going to be... that. Sorry guys. So that's done. Uh, I want to prove that actually by I'm going to close this terminal and then close the session and then I'm going to initiate again and try and connect with the new password.
So pi, and our new password is bingo. Right, let's try and wrap this up. Um, there's just one more thing we need to do, and that is to update and upgrade the operating system on our Raspberry Pi. So let's do that right now. Um, I need to run PuTTY. IP address okay so there it is there let's log in great we're in and now what we need to do is sudo app um, what is it? sudo app get update so that'll update all the it's like a list of packages I guess it doesn't install them it only updates our list within the system that's going to take a while so I'll come back for that Alright, so we've updated the list and um, now we need to upgrade it. Uh, okay, sudo app get upgrade. I think that's right. Alright, so it says here all those packages will be upgraded. Do you want to continue? Yes. This is probably going to take a while. Do you want to continue? Yes. Alright, so the upgrade has um, done its thing. I've got a message here. I'm just giving some information. I'm not going to worry about that too much. We've only got one option, and that is press Q to quit. So get focused to the terminal Q. And we're still going. Cool, that's done. So our Raspberry Pi now has fully upgraded itself in the operating system area and I think we're done now. I'm just going to clear the desktop here, let me just terminate the um, party connection. Okay much like the previous video I will be embedding a few more videos on the screen here for you to follow along with and all in the aim to um, get to the next step of our projects and we'll probably start with remote desktop access now heads up um, I'll probably not be going with real VNC if you're familiar with that the problem with real VNC it's a very good uh, system but there are some limitations uh, with the license agreements so stick around and um, there's more work to be done.